The Borderlands series has some pretty obvious historical elements to it. For example, the devastation of the planet Pandora by intergalactic mining corporations resembles the devastation of places like Africa by colonial empires. And the hunt for mythical vaults full of weapons and wealth resembles the hunt for El Dorado, the city of gold in South America. But in this video, I want to explore a history within Borderlands that's a little bit more obscure the magical beings known in the game as Sirens. It may be absurd, but I argue that Sirens represent the historically real phenomenon that was popular throughout Europe in the years between 1400 and 1800 of using magic to hunt for treasure. I'm Dr. Darren Reed, and this is History Through Games Borderlands Edition. Thank you for tuning in. I'm a historian at McGill University, and this is a video series I've started to explore historical themes, concepts, and debates through the lens of popular video games. And like I say at the beginning and end of all of my videos, I want this series to become a collaboration with you. So please let me know in the comments below, or DM me if you want to, if you have any feedback on the series, if there's any historical concepts you're interested in, if there's any games you think I should play, and then I will take those comments and integrate them into this series going forward. If you've never played Borderlands, Sirens are people with magical abilities like teleportation, mind control, or technography. They're often covered in glowing purple symbols, and they use their powers to hunt treasure or protect treasure in the form of vaults which are treasure troves of weapons and cash left behind after the devastation of Pandora by intergalactic mining corporations. And there clearly weren't such sirens wandering around uh, early modern Europe, but there were certainly magical treasure hunters. That is because finding treasure is almost impossible without some kind of external help. Modern treasure hunters look to technology like metal detectors, ground penetrating radar, or lidar drones. But before technology existed, many treasure hunters looked to magic and the spiritual realm, using a variety of spells, elixirs, and enchanted objects to reveal hidden treasure. In fact, magic was believed to be so integral to finding treasure that an entire industry developed around priests, scholars, and outright con men selling their services to treasure hunters and special legislation was developed in many jurisdictions to punish the misuse of magic for treasure hunting. One of the most common forms of treasure hunting magic was the Christopher Prayer, a spell designed to summon St. Christopher, force him to find treasure for you, and then banish him back to the spirit world. Different forms of the Christopher Prayer were sold in grimoires or spell books. And one particular grimoire from 1741 explained the magical ritual needed to summon Christopher. The treasure hunter was to burn two blessed candles at 11 o'clock p.m. and burn them until midnight. At midnight, St. Christopher would appear and would sign a contract agreeing to give the treasure hunter a certain amount of money every year in return for two conditions. Condition number one was that much of the money would be given to relieve the poor. Condition number two was that if the treasure hunter ever demanded more money than was stipulated in the contract, St. Christopher would send evil demons to torment the treasure hunter. Another grimoire specified that treasure hunters had to be very careful and explicit when talking to St. Christopher, and they had to ask him to bring money, gold, or silver in the currency accepted in their region, which reflected rampant counterfeiting issues going on in early modern Europe. Now the Christopher prayer uh, was not sanctioned by any major church in Europe. Uh, the Catholic and Protestant churches condemned it as sacrilegious and superstitious, but it was nevertheless popular throughout the centuries. Another popular form of treasure hunting magic was using enchanted devices. One grimoire said that you could use a candle made from human fat to find treasure, that as you got closer to the treasure, the candle would start to flicker more and more, and as you were standing on top of it, the candle would go out. 
Another grimoire from the 1600s explained a procedure for enchanting a mirror to make it show you treasure. The procedure went like this. First, write ESQX on the mirror. Second, put the mirror on a church altar. Third, say mass over the mirror three times. Each time after you say mass, you have to repeat the following incantation. I call upon you, mirror, in the name of God, and in the name of my maker, and in the name of the holy patriarchs and prophets and the four evangelists. You shall show me the hidden treasure, wherever it may be, and you shall not deceive me, but you shall show me the place and the spot, and reveal them without any falsehood. Next, sprinkle a mirror in holy water, and smoke it with incense, and bam, you have an enchanted mirror. All you had to do was hold the mirror up to the sun, repeat the incantation, and the mirror would show you exactly the place to find hidden treasure. But although magic was supposed to make treasure hunting easier, it could also be extremely deadly. On one infamous night on Christmas Eve 1715 in a town called Jena in Germany, three treasure hunters tried to summon the demon Nathael to help them find some nearby treasure. They entered a small house and closed all the windows except one because they didn't want to be seen. They lit a fire, they drew a magic circle on the ground, and they said the incantation to summon Nathael. But before they finished their incantation, two of them dropped dead and one of them became delirious and wandered out into the village. Overnight, as the town tried to investigate the events, one of the watchmen sat to guard over the dead bodies also fell dead, and two other guardsmen fell unconscious. Now, the immediate cause of all of this was undoubtedly smoke inhalation, because they had not vented the room correctly, and they were burning a coal fire. But even though the town authorities knew this, they also suspected that the process of summoning a demon had cursed the area, and they convicted the last surviving treasure hunter of 10 years of exile for using magic to hunt for treasure. Now, it's maybe very tempting for us to laugh at these magical treasure hunters as somehow stupid or ignorant, but it's important to place their actions within the social context of the period, specifically within the context of pre-capitalist economic structures. Within a capitalist economic structure, gaining wealth is a value we often believe that every individual should strive to become as rich as possible. And theoretically, anyone can get as much money in the world. But prior to capitalist world views, many European village economies were believed to be closed systems, where if one person gained money, everyone else was losing money. So the socially acceptable thing to do is everyone stay the same. The rich would stay rich, the poor would stay poor, anyone tried to change that, then they were in harming everyone around them. In that context, the only one of the only socially acceptable ways of gaining wealth was either making money from a foreign land, which was difficult to travel to foreign lands, or to make money from the spiritual world or from magic. Because if a demon or an angel or a saint or some sort of spirit helped you find treasure, then clearly you were meant to have that treasure and it was socially acceptable to gain that money. So there you have it! Sirens may appear to be one of the least historically relevant aspects of the Borderlands games, but as I argue, they do reflect the historical phenomenon of magical treasure hunting. But what do you think? Do you think it's important, for example, to differentiate between using magic to hunt for treasure and using technology to hunt for treasure? Or do you think Borderlands or games like it are useful for exploring historical concepts like that of magical treasure hunting. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As I say at the beginning and end of every video, I don't want to just lecture at you, I want to talk to you about the things that you're interested in, and I want this series to become a conversation. So please use the comments, get me up anywhere you can, and help me shape this channel to be what you want it to be. Well that's enough for today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Farewell!